it all, welcome back to Beanie Tobbies and in this video we have got an unboxing and an assembly coming up. Now, first of all a big thank you and a big shout out to Technology Outlet. They were very kind enough to send me this printer out for review so I can't thank them enough. Now I will leave some links down in the description below and also if you follow that link and use my discount code which I'll also leave down in the description below you'll get 10% off this printer also 10% off the new Creality Ender 3 printer and also the CR10 Smart Pro printer so use my code down in the description below like I say to get 10% off those three printers so let's get into this unboxing and see what we've got going on alright guys let's get this thing unboxed and we can see what we've got well I know what it is but I just want to keep the suspense for you guys. <laughs> You'll know what it is from the description anyway. Okay guys, so what we have here is the new Creality Ender 2 Pro. Now I was quite excited about this little printer because it is such a small form printer very lightweight, very compact, take it anywhere basically. So what I think we should do now is get this thing unboxed, take a little look around the parts and then get it assembled. It's supposed to be like 90% assembled and it's put together in about four steps. So we'll, we'll see that when we, when we come to unbox it. All right guys, let's get this thing out of its cardboard tomb. <laughs> Try to, there we go. And we can see what we've got inside. So obviously first layer we have, let's get this centered, there we go, it's the foam. User guide, after sales service guide. Quite a comprehensive user guide. Obviously we have our baggie with all our fixings, tools, a little bit of filament to get us going. Spool holder. Another part of the spool holder, all lightweight plastic. Power lead. Screen rotating clicky bright red knob okay next layer we actually have the printer itself quite awkward because it's all attached we'll take a better look at this once it's out of the box so Let's remove some more of this foam and try and get it out of the box. That's tiny. That is a tiny little printer. And we've got one last thing in here. We have bright red handle. Okay, so that is everything now out of the box. So I shall remove this box out of the way and then we'll have a little look around the machine and get it assembled. Alright guys, so this was, well this is the entire contents of that cardboard box. Now assembly wise it doesn't look like it's going to take much at all. Um, it looks straightforward, I reckon I could even do this without even looking at the instructions. Um, so we'll go through the assembly together and then we can have a proper look around the machine once everything's all assembled but so far it is looking extremely well built actually it, it weighs absolutely I mean, this is all metal um, obviously the base of the printer itself is plastic with a metal frame inside but it weighs absolutely nothing so this thing is going to be extremely portable which is actually quite handy if you want to take it around to your mate's house, take it to school, college, you know, wherever you might want to take it. Um, so yeah, we'll go through the assembly together 
and then we can have a look around the machine once it's all together. Alright guys, here we go, let's assemble this. So they're quoting that this is a four step assembly and it's 90% pre-assembled or installed. So let's actually find out how many steps this is going to take. I mean, I've had a quick little look through the book. Um, it's so simple to install and set up. Basically all we're going to do is just bolt, <laughs> bolt the upper gantry to the base, uh, make a few connections, plug in the screen and we are there. So before I do that I'm going to have to go through this baggie which we might as well do together so we can actually have a proper look at everything that came with it. So obviously it comes with a set of cutters, never have enough sets of those. Like I said a little small roll of filament. Now obviously in this baggie we have got unjamming needle, cleaning the nozzle, micro SD card to USB reader and obviously the micro SD card which is an 8 gig is inside there. We have spare nozzles and couplings. We have some M4x16s. We have some M5x14s. We have got one M5x40. And we have got two M5x45s. And obviously, baggie of tools, screwdriver, some spanners and some allen keys. So that was everything that was in that bag. Now, I'll get my own allen keys out to assemble this. So first things first, what we're going to do is we're going to place this and we're going to put two bolts through this hole, these holes. Okay, so they are the M4x16s. Okay, let me get our Allen key. And we just need to screw these in. Okay, so we've got our two M4 by 16s screwed up into place. Next job, we're going to flip the machine on its side so we can make the two fixings underneath, which will be located in this one here and that one there. And said screws are going to be two M5 by 45s. So that's the big long ones. They're going to screw up from underneath. Okay, so there we have our two nipped up under the bottom there. Okay, so next day we've got to attach the spool holder. So that's step one. Here comes step two. So got a holder which is just literally going to sit inside there. So I don't know if you can see on the camera, you can just see this hole that lines up. And in that one, we are going to drop the M5 by 40. Down through like that. And then we're just going to do it up. Okay, so that's attached. And the actual holder on. Good thing about this design is if you want to take it somewhere, literally just folds right up out of the way. Okay, so that's step two. So far, so good. Okay, guys, so up next, we're going to be installing the carry handle on top, which is just going to sit on top. Now, on this, there is a hole in the back for the lead screw to fit into. So that is just going to sit on the top there like that. And that is going to be fixed in place with the two remaining M5 by 14 screws. So Crowley have actually thought about you fixing this and they have actually put a hole so you can put your Allen key all the way through the hole and do it with two screws, which is very handy. Because if not, you'd be sitting there for a month of Sundays trying to do it up. 
So we just need to drop our two screws into place. Allen key down through the top. Do them up. Right guys, so step one, step two, step three. I think they might be telling us porky pies because next step we've got to do some wiring but yet we still haven't had the screen attached. So four steps, mm, not quite. I'm going to say five. So next step is we just have to make our wiring connections. So we're just going to plug in the end stop switch. And the stepper motor. Now these wires will only go in one way round. Okay, so two connections there. Now the rest of the connections are going to be made up top. So let's have a look. No, I'm trying to find E. Here we go for the extruder. Okay. And then we've got X stepper motor up. And end stop switch. Okay, so that is all our wiring connections are now done. Okay, just to be clear, we have plugged in the extruder motor wire into the extruder around the back. And on the side, we have plugged in the other stepper motor for the X axis and obviously the X axis end stop switch. And following up the last two connections, obviously we, the other two connections we made we're down the bottom here. Now this one is obviously for the Z end stop switch and the Z stepper motor. So that is all the wiring that we just done. Okay guys, now I'm gonna say that this is step five. We've got to attach the screen, nice and simple. We've got our wire situated here, which we'll just untape for now. We're going to plug that in, it'll only go in one way round in the back here. So we'll plug the screen in, like so. And then you can see on the side here we have these two plastic fixing lugs. And they are just going to go, I'll just lift the machine up, into these holes that are down here. Like so, slot it down. And there we have it guys. We have fully assembled Creality Ender 2 Pro in five steps not four there we go, guys <laughs> fully assembled in all its glory and this thing weighs absolutely nothing i um, think they're claiming around 4.65 kilograms which is absolutely nothing for a 3d printer so it is very lightweight very portable very compact so like i say it all folds up neatly so take it anywhere you want to go really ideal for uh, traveling with if you want to travel with your 3d printer that is <laughs> so let's like say we'll just take a quick look around this thing first things first though like I do with all my printers we'll need to adjust these V slot wheels I have had a look at them they have done up extremely tightly they're far too tight I can feel there's a lot of resistance um, you they don't want to be completely sloppy but you want to have a little bit of free movement in them because if not, you're just going to eat up your wheels extremely quick and you're not going to get very nice smooth prints. So I'll show you how to quickly do that. So around the back of the machine, well, the top two wheels will be fixed, but on the bottom, on the inside, up in here, there's a nut. So you want to take a spanner that comes with it, put it on and just turn it and slightly loosen it. And then what you're looking for is a little small, just a little tiny bit of play. Not too much, because if you have too much, that'll be sloppy and horrible. But you just want to have a little bit of play in these wheels. Now you see, there is too much. So we'll just turn it back slightly. So you just want to have a, you can hold it and have a little bit of play. And then that'll run a lot smoother. Same over here, these are far too tight. Spanner on, loosen the wheel off slightly. We just need to get this the right tightness so there's a little bit of movement. So at the moment it's a bit too loose because we have got some major wobbles. <laughs> you don't want no wobbles on your printer. Wobbles is bad. But what we're looking for is a nice smooth, 
you know, spend a little bit of time with this just tweaking and fine tuning it your prints will be a lot better for it and you'll find that your rollers will then last a lot longer as well and you see here I can just move it okay then also you have got adjustment on the bed as well so you've got two adjustments on the bed but my bed is actually nice and smooth and there's actually a little bit of play in the bed so I'm not actually going to adjust that so setup wise for me I'm quite happy with that now we'll just obviously take a little look around the printer starting around the back we obviously have single lead screw going up so we've got a part cooling fan there blowing right onto the end of the nozzle the nozzle is insulated as well obviously on the end here we do have belt tensioner so we can tension the belt same down the front here for the bed so we can obviously that is far too tight we can adjust the tension on the bed down on the front we have USB for plugging it into the PC we have a micro SD card slot obviously we have our screen now back on this side we have our power input we have our on off switch we also have pull out drawer for keeping snacks tools whatever you want to put in there and around the back we have our power supply voltage switch obviously over here in the UK we're set to 230 volts so obviously very important to check these guys now on the bed we have magnetic flexible build plate bed itself has four see under there red leveling knobs and we'll use these for leveling the bed when we set the printer up ready for its first print so i think next job now i'm gonna get this up onto my workbench and we'll get it powered up make sure all powers up and works correctly and that is going to be the end for this video i'll then be following up video follow-up video sorry with uh test prints to see how well this thing performs all right guys i've got it up on the bench ready to go so just give you a little quick little few specs on this thing the printer dimensions are 421 by 383 by 465 it's quite a small form printer uh, build size we have obviously 165 165 by 180 great great little part printer this is or if you want to print anything small little small DIY objects this printer would be absolutely ideal I'll deal for anybody wanting to start out in 3D printing who doesn't want to go and spend an absolute fortune. Um, so far, I'm just loving the design and the fact that this thing is so small. Um, great little printer. Now, obviously, this is a cantilever designed 3D printer. So we just have the single arm supporting the hot end. Because it's quite a small build platform, we haven't got to worry too much about wobbling because this thing hasn't got to travel too far. So I'm hoping this thing's going to chuck out some good quality prints that's going to be in a follow-up video for now this one was just mainly an assembly and a first look but so far i am quite pleased with how this thing looks um they, they're saying that the printing speed this thing can do up to 100 millimeters a second then they're recommending average print speed should be about 60. so yeah between 50 and 60 millimeters a second should actually be fine on this thing so i think what we'll do now is we'll fire it up for the very first time make sure it turns on all right guys plugged in powered on power switch back right hand corner we'll turn it on see what happens screen has come to life there we have it so setup wise i've gone for near enough exactly the same as any of the other printers that have the rotary knob style display so basically we've got all our settings that we could possibly need inside our staff were saying it's very quiet there is a bit of other noise in here because there's a printer sitting basically right next to it there and I've got my CR3040 Pro running over on the other side of the room you can see straight away obviously we've got to do some bed levelling just want to make sure this thing all alter homes correctly 
And like I said, I'm going to be doing a follow-up video of how this thing prints. So stay tuned for that one, guys. I um, hope you found this of use. If you did, give me a like up. Give me a like up. Give me a thumbs up, even. If you want to subscribe, subscribe. I'm going to leave all the links you could possibly need down in the description below. Um, obviously, don't forget to use my discount code as well if you want 10% off this printer or the new Ender 3 S1 or the CR10 Smart Pro. So, yeah, stay tuned, guys. I shall be back with a follow up video on this Wii Mighty Beast. Anyway, that's it for me for now for waffling on, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheerio!